Hello, my name is Stephen Owens, and I'm a senior K-12 policy analyst at the Georgia Budget and Policy Institute. The Georgia Senate just passed the House Bill 81, which includes the budget for the next fiscal year. I wanted to talk real quick about the changes made in that budget and also what it kept in place. There weren't that many changes for K-12 schools. Five million dollars that the House had put in for school nutrition was taken out by the Senate. That'll go to conference committee. Um, a couple million dollars were added into programs that were included from previous legislation for dyslexia screening and computer science courses. The bigger issues are what's really recognized and cemented in this bill um, for the next several years and what it means for K-12 schools. And in order to show you that, I wanted to tap into the teacher in me and give you a little bit of a visual. So I decided to use my whiteboard here. All right, hold on, let me get this out of the way. Okay. So to give you a sense of what this graph is, this is every year the state's budget for K-12 education. Um, has it met the, the state bar for fully funding schools? So way back here is 2002. Um, the year that we all graduated high school, but beginning in 2003, all the way through this current budget, the state of Georgia has fully funded public schools um, by the calculation that's set in law only twice. And what the amended budget and what the large budget for next year is going to cement just hundreds of millions less for public schools. So you can just see overall, we're talking $10 billion several times. So this is in the 200s millions of dollars. That's what each of these tick marks represent. So we're getting down to $1.4 billion taken away from public schools in a single year. The cumulative effect is $10 billion taken over this time. $383 million moving forward. Um, so the budget keeps that in place. That's another thing that we're going to have to deal with moving forward. But a lot of discussion in the state house is about all this federal money that we're getting. And we are getting significant dollars from the federal government um, this year that will be able to be spent over the next few years. But what many people don't realize is there's actually a reason for this. And it's a small thing called the global pandemic. So these are one-time funds. And yes, even as they're significant, think about the position it puts school districts in. If you're given a lot of money this year, do you hire several staff that you're going to have to fire in a couple of years once these dollars aren't around? No, this are better for one-time infusions to support the infrastructure of the school. It's meant to address um, what they're calling learning loss or better yet, uh, instructional time loss. This is not a substitute for state dollars. We have to think about the amount of money we're getting from the state and from federal governments in regards to the needs of the students. That as we got federal dollars in 2009, we were coming off of the worst recession we'd seen in a hundred years. So we need that additional funding for students dealing with food insecurity, whose parents were laid off, who lost their houses. Now, as we get even more federal funding, Think about the impact this pandemic has had on children, what that's going to look like in the classroom. Of course we need more federal fundings, but that doesn't take the state off the hook for actually meeting its constitutional responsibility to provide adequate public education. And I hope that we can continue to remember this as we have this discussion about school funding in the future.